Welcome, Welcome to, to Sailing, Sailing Liberty. Liberty. We're really glad you're back. Welcome back, friends. Wow. For those of you that missed the live feed today of getting these solar panels on, we've got a high res update for you to bring you up to speed. And boy, it's something. It is a beautiful day. And in the tropics, you're going to get maximum output on your solar panels. And that's the whole idea. Look at these beauties. Now, let's take a closer look at these panels because these are from Renogy. And Helen found them online on their website, and they really are something different and special. Um, let's zoom right in onto these, sweetie. So these are called half cells. So instead of being twice the size, they have what they call a half cell, which is this much. And then you have 10 bus bars across here. So it protects you from shading. It protects you from micro cracks that would otherwise ruin a larger area of the panel and it gives you higher output in less space because it's so much more compact. You might notice how there's very little space between everything. It's almost completely black and that produces a lot more power. So these suckers, not only are they tougher, stronger, they're guaranteed for 25 years. Now, our lithium iron phosphate batteries are only guaranteed for 10 <laughs> years. So we're living off the hook, off the grid, on the lamb, running around in coves and up jungle trails, you know, we're gonna run out of battery power before we run out of solar power. But by then we should know how to rub two sticks together and keep things going. <laughs> what do you think, Ellen? Cook a fish right on the So beach. these uh, solar panels, they each weigh around 62 pounds, which is 28.5 uh, kilos and therefore they had to build very strong structure. Yeah, take a look at this uh, key right here. This is all Schedule 40 thick wall aluminum tubing. It's uh, what they call a pipe. So that you pipe is measured by the internal d dimension, the ID, and that is a uh, one and a half inch ID. But the OD, the outside dimension, is two and seven eighths. It's nearly two inches on the outside. And uh, we're using two and seven eighths speed rail fittings from McMaster car and boy they gave great service great return um, policies if you, if you order too many or whatever you can send them back no sweat no worries and we got these great check out right here this is this is the homework of the whole thing is these uh you still got some beautiful rubber squeezing out right there these feet are adjustable for angle because the boat doesn't have any straight lines on it and uh you bolt these through to thick backing plates on the inside with a nice fat 7 16 bolt. Boy, that is one strong fitting. And it's really on there. So you have no vibration, no wiggle. Everything is locked. But it's not welded, so there's nothing to crack. Now that we have the panels on, our next step is to go ahead and drill holes through these fittings. Everywhere there's a pipe entering a fitting, and we're going to through bolt it with 5 16 inch stainless steel bolts so that it'll be a rock solid against lift and twist. So uh, how much uh, pipe do you have there? Well, the minimum order was 350 bucks and they bring it out on a tractor trailer so you can see why they want you to order a fair amount because uh, you'll see in the episode where we go over everything in detail. Uh, we ended up using, out of the 100 feet we bought, we bought five 20 foot pieces. We've used 87 feet so far, which leaves us just enough for a wind generator post. You know, we don't know how we're going to get a wind generator. They're pretty darn expensive for 400 watts of power. 24-hour power, though. Uh, we're hoping to figure out a way to get a hold of a wind generator. So that's our next move. We've got the pipe ready. We're ready to throw up the post. This is the ceiling. Yeah, it's a lot of ceiling. The great thing is we're going to put our bimini back up right underneath of it. It was all built around the bimini. So when we have heat coming off the bottom of the ceiling, we're going to be able to uh, protect ourselves from the heat because normally you feel on the bottom of the bimini, you feel the, the uh, heat like radiating right off that bimini cover of the sunbrella. Uh, now we're going to have the heat radiating off of this with the air gap. It's going to flow out and we're hoping it's going to be the coolest ride we've ever had with our bimini and our solar cover on top of it. And hopefully our bimini will last forever uh, with that cover on it in the shade, made in the shade. So uh, right now we're enjoying a wide open view of this little <laughs> cove and this little jungle and uh, nice breezy sunny day, you know. If we were hooked up, which we're not, we'd be making a lot of juice. In fact, they say that we make about 22% more power than a standard uh, grid tie 
panel with these, plus they're smaller. So you take that times two, we're gonna be looking at 5,500 5, watt hours per day in the tropics as a maximum uh, produced electricity. It's 550 watts each, 1,100 watts total for the array. Um, with that kind of output, that's more than half of our storage capacity. Uh, and that with our added with our little wing, um, 480 watts we have back on the on the uh, stern. We're going to be getting close to having a daily replacement value, which is really great. Let's, uh, add a little wind generator or two in there, and we'll really be set pretty. You know, but right now it looks like it's going to work out fine. I'd rather have more batteries than, <laughs> than more solar than you need. So now we're going to go inside. We're going to show you guys the packing plates. So yeah, the key to the structure is a really strong backing plate. Here's one that we haven't put on yet. We have a single one we have to do in the back. We start with one hole, so we line up one hole and bolt it up, and then we drill the other two holes straight through the boat so they line up. Because when you're going through something thick like the deck or whatever, you never are completely straight. So you need a little bit of wiggle room, and every one of them is custom. So up here we have, we actually able to salvage two that were from another part of the installation in the boat for uh, the pad eyes for the uh, main sheet. We grabbed those and used them again, left and right, and then we had to make these uh, out of mahogany scraps we had left over from the dinghy. And since we have these uh, bows in here that trim out the ceiling, we had to route it and get a nice fit around there. It's some big washers. We got nine lock wa nuts on there. It's locked in tight, and we're talking three and a half inch thick. So the head of that bolt is not moving at all. It is locked in square to that fitting. Everything is rock, rock on rock on rock. Let's go back and take a look at the electrical box. After you, darling. Okay. Now we're in the captain's quarters. And it's a mess back here, but what are you gonna do? It's a work in progress. All right, so this is the main electrical cabinet. Right now, we're about to do some changes to it because we've doubled our, um, our battery capacity and we've more than doubled our solar capacity. So we're about to bring, bring into play a bigger breaker down here it's going to be a 400 amp breaker for our, our lithium iron phosphate batteries these are outgoing breakers uh, here here's our solar incoming breakers i still got to put in three more of those just like these are going to go right here we got ac coming in we got we got to make these connections to our battery bank our new our new breaker so we're doing upgrades on top of upgrades we're doing upgrades before we even finish our first upgrade so in the future, make sure you do your upgrade first before you need another upgrade. Now let's take a look at our buffer bank over here. So Helen said, hey, we got these great old golf cart batteries. They've always been good to us, but how long do flooded batteries last? Well, they don't last forever, not even close. So what we did is we uh, took the advice of a good friend of ours, Captain Tom, and went ahead and uh, got these. They're the best AGM batteries made, uh, as far as we can tell. And um, their uh, life uh, length uh, should be 10 years. Seven years, 10 years, somewhere in there. If we keep them topped up, which we're gonna do with this right here, let's show back over here in the electrical cabinet. We got a 24 to 12 volt Orion. So we're gonna always be trickle charging our buffer bank, except during electrical storms. During the lightning storms, we're gonna shut off all the expensive stuff and we're just gonna go with 12 volt because these batteries are bulletproof over here. They're, there's no, there's no brains in them, there's no electronics. So, but all the rest of the day, we're gonna be trickle charging from 24 to 12 and keeping these topped up. Now this 24, this, um, I'm sorry, I have it reversed, 12 to 24. And then this 12 to 24 is uh, gonna give us ability to charge from the alternators, uh, which we'll show you next time. But uh, the alternators will be out putting out 12 volts and once the house uh, buffer bank is charged up, then we'll be able to kick power over to the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. But yeah, this buffer bank is set up. Then you see right here, this is our switchboard for charging, our solar switchboard. Um, this is our you know, power cutoff for our, our uh, engine start. And then we have a switch for every bank in the 12 volt route, uh, universe, which gives us ability to charge from our solar um, back over here we go. Sorry, I have all my supplies piled in here. We got a 12 volt bus bar here, and that 
feeds over to here. And then we pick our banks, like say, hey, we want to charge, let's charge our windless battery. That's this, this switch right here. We do need to put some labels on these. And then we have our house bank one, house bank two, start one, start two. And uh, we can charge them all at once. We can decide, we can check their voltage. Say we, we just charge a start battery once a week or something for on the hook for a month or whatever. And we charge our house batteries every day. Or, you know, if we're running the Orion in here, the 12, 24 to 12, we'll have the house bank on. These two will be both be on. Um, or if we say, hey, windless, you know, once a week we charge it. If we don't use it much, we'll just get charge it for a few hours and give it a little trickle charge. Back to you, Daisy. So this is a solar charge control, MPPT, 100 volt and 30 amps. That's more than enough for the two panels put together. It's going to kick some ass and we're overrated, so we'd rather be overrated. Than overrated. And it has a Bluetooth control, so you can check it out in your iPad. And it's Victron, so come on, you got nothing to worry about. Let's go have a look. Wow. You know what? The sun makes us happy and now it makes us power. What more can you do to live on the hook off the grid? It's all fishing poles and solar panels. Maybe a little rice to go with it. We have a couple of jobs to finish it up. Uh, here you see this uh, flange. flange. Here we're gonna put the big mahogany uh, wood over top. It's gonna be around uh, three meters, which is like nine feet. It's gonna comprise our boom gallows to keep our boom off of our panels and give us a good place to rest our boom when we're changing out to a reefed main. Wow, you guys are not gonna believe the next episode, Helen. Tell them about it. So in the next episode, I'm going out shrimping on the commercial shrimp boat. Bikini the buccaneer style. <laughs> It was an amazing night. There were dolphins, birds flying around. Uh, all in all, long night. A lot of hard work for uh, the boys, the crew, but I think it's really amazing to be on the water. Well, now Helen knows how to commercial shrimp, by the way. She got pretty good at it. <laughs> in the end of the night, yeah. Well, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all the new subscribers and everything you guys do for us in the comments especially. We spend a lot of time reading the comments and learning from you guys. Great ideas, all of the sailors out there that are watching. Yes, it was a little update how we are doing right now. Our last big project before we haul out, we have a serious problem with our hull. As you might know from the Ultimate Stuffing Box episode. Wow, yeah. it's a doozy. So we, fingers crossed, uh, we're gonna get safely to haul out and we don't sink on the way there. Uh, We've got a lot of bilge pumps <laughs> and a garbage pump. So yeah. hopefully between that and the good Lord, we're gonna make it. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on, on Sailing, Sailing Liberty. Liberty.